Hello everyone and welcome back to No Gym, No Problem, our online resource for getting in shape, staying in shape, everything related to kind of fitness here in kind of these bite-sized chunks. And I think what's most important about all these different tips and workouts that we give is trying to um, reconstruct what people's um, thought processes or beliefs are about what it actually takes to get in shape and what it actually takes to stay in shape because they're two so totally different animals. Um, getting in shape has its own set of obstacles and things you need to do. Staying in shape has its own set of other barriers, both external, internal, physical, mental, and so forth. In order to really get to where you want to be and what we do with our private clients in our lifestyle and nutritional coaching program is really start to look at um, how are we thinking about things? You know, we're really limited by our belief systems and what we think we need to do or what should be happening versus what's actually happening. So in today's tip, what I really want to talk about is what's normal. Okay, so when it comes to food and when it comes to movement, our ideas of normal are totally skewed. Um, they're not what your parents' idea of norms were or their parents or the parents before them. It's gradually changed over the years, especially in the last 50 years, it's really changed. So when we talk about food and stuff like that, a normal serving size is, especially in America, is roughly anywhere between 25 to 50% less than what most people are eating. Now again, this is averages, right? So the average person can eat anywhere, like if you go to a restaurant or if you go to a fast food joint or you know, really anywhere that's not being cooked at home, you can easily consume anywhere from 1,500 to 3,000 calories uh, in one sitting and not have a whole lot of nutrients behind that. So one of the big things we have to do is kind of find a way to get that more in balance. It's not so much how many calories are you eating, it's how much nutrients are you getting in. Because if you're not getting any nutrients behind those calories, obviously, you're not getting, uh, you're not gonna be able to get healthier. And this process is really about getting to a baseline of health. And then usually as a byproduct, we tend to lose weight or get into a fitter shape. So think about your portion sizes, not just in a sense of you have to measure stuff out or become some type of crazy food scientist. In fact, the exact opposite. What you want to start to notice is how much am I having of something? How much do I really need of something? And w does this food, is this a whole food? Or is this highly processed and actually lacking nutrients behind it? So if you see stuff like it's fortified by this, or we substituted for this, or we went back and we added some more stuff along the way to make this food better for you to eat, um, those are some red flags. But if it's stuff like, you know, things like, for example, a piece of fish or a piece of steak or a piece of chicken or broccoli or potatoes or rice or these are foods that are whole foods. There's not a ton of ingredients. Usually there's only one, but there's nutrients in them in their regular normal state or as normal as we can get nowadays. So that's what we're really looking for. And when you start eating whole foods, you don't need as much food in order to fulfill some of these nutritional um, deficiencies that a lot of people have and to just feel satisfied and full. Because you can go to, everybody's been here, you can go to a buffet of some sort, Chinese buffet, whatever, and cram a ton of food only to be kind of hungry or even starving an hour or even less um, right after that, that meal. So you're not really feeding yourself. And the irony is people that are kind of overweight or if you're, having, uh, if you're struggling to lose weight, um, you're actually, even though you might be eating a lot of food, your body might actually be hungry um, in terms of are you getting actual nutrients in. So I'll give you an example. In some days, I'll only eat one time, or some days I don't even need to eat um, as much as you would think, or as much as I even used to a couple of years ago, because I just have a much better understanding of what does my body need at the time, um, depending on how, how physically active I am that day and you know if I'm stressed out or all these other different factors how did I sleep the night before um, etc 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 so there's a lot of stuff that go into play here when you get 
more towards the scale of, oh, this has a lot of nutrients in it occurring naturally, then you can start to really understand how much do I need, and now you can create a new normal for, say, a portion of food or whatever it might be. When it comes to exercise, we've kind of fallen into this weird trend, um, especially with stuff like high intensity intervals and boot camps and the whole CrossFit and the whole kind of do less to get more. Now that is true, but not in the way we have come to know it today, and especially with all the marketing and stuff out there. You, the normal thing for your body to do from just a health standpoint, not our society or anything else, is you should be moving every single day in some way, shape, or form. Now, that doesn't mean you're doing crazy barbell whatever, um, but it does mean you're getting your body moving. It could be something as simple as a five to 10 minute walk, or it could be something as invigorating as a full 60 minute strength training workout or boot camp style class or whatever it might be. But you have to learn how to cultivate movement as a daily practice because we're designed to do it. It's, it, it will reach, um, it will help you reach your optimal health because that's what we're designed to do. We're not really designed for, okay, I'm going to work out as hard as I can for one hour, sit on my butt for 48 hours, and then do something similar to that again. It's kind of a band-aid approach to a broken bone. You can make progress there. It can be effective. But over my 11 years of doing this stuff, I see kind of one of two things happening. Either people burn out and get injured because of this super high intensity, low, super high intensity, low. Um, your body kind of, you're, you're, you're switching gears too hard. It's like if you were in a stick shift car and you just start jacking on and cranking on the clutch and stuff like that. You can get away with it, but it's not the most optimal thing for that device or that machine. And in this case, your body is not optimal either. Um, so you either get injured or you burn out because it's just hard and it's not fun. Or what happens is you just kind of can't maintain it. You, it's just, you either feel like, oh man, today I just don't have the energy to give what I need to for that day. So you just kind of scrap the workout altogether. Um, or you just kind of beat yourself up and go, man, I suck because I only have to do this two or three times per week or whatever. And for whatever reason, I just don't feel like it or I can't do it. So I must be weak or I must not have willpower or I must just suck in some way. How is everybody else doing this? I can't, blah, 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 blah. All that stuff that we all have in our head. So what I'm here to say is, again, let's create a new normal. And that's what these workouts are designed to do that we offer you here. And I believe they're so much more valuable than the price tag we put on this because if you can find ways to do these movements where we really focus on how are we doing it? You know, how are you breathing? What is your positioning like? How does it feel when you're doing a squat or a push up or some other thing that we're working on in that particular workout? Small dosages consistently over time far outweigh these kind of heroic efforts that happen sporadically. Um, and this is where the idea of consistency really comes in. Um, one of my most consistent clients of all time, um, his name is Art, he's in my private coaching group. What we do when we work out is we try to find just what's the bare minimum we can do. Because especially as we all start to age, especially if you have some issues, bad knee, bad shoulder, this, that, or the other thing, and whatever else is going on in your life, sometimes you can't just muster up a nine out of 10 intensity level workout. So what you actually want to do, and this has been shown in study after study, I've seen it anecdotally with myself and my clients, if you can, on that scale of one to 10, stay somewhere around six, seven, or maybe an eight, right, out of 10, so somewhere kind of in the middle, not too low where it's just, you're not really um, having a stimulus that's great enough, but it's just enough to where you can kind of get something out of it, but not enough where you feel wiped out or, or burnt out or super sore for the next couple days. If you can stay somewhere in the middle there, you're going to be a lot more successful simply for the fact that you can keep on doing it when you're stressed out, when you're maybe not feeling so high in, uh, you know, energy levels, but you can still go out and do something. You know, you might not be able to squat a ton of weight, but you can go out and do some body weight movements and stretch out and get that breathing pattern built up and get blood flowing and things like that. So that's what these workouts are designed to do. 
You can use them high intensity. You just crank up how fast you're doing it and crank down the rest time, right? That's simple, or add more repetitions or add more rounds. But what we really are aiming for is that kind of in the middle somewhere. It's, again, on a scale of one to 10, it's somewhere between that six and eight level range um, of your perceived exertion, how hard you're going, okay? So that's just a quick kind of synopsis on how does this whole thing actually work? Because once we get to where we say we wanna go, that's really just when the game starts. Now we have to figure out how do we do this forever? or at least as long as we can live, right? Or be active. And what I've seen is that it actually increases your career, if you will, to, to be able to stay active into your 60s, into your 70s, and beyond in a lot of cases. Um, but if we don't cultivate that now, it's really hard to do it, um, you know, once you get towards the end of that scale. Um, so. I'm always a proponent of, hey, if you're, this is something you're gonna do, why not start right now? Don't wait for life to get easier. Don't wait for life to get less busy because life doesn't work like that. There's no pause button on life, right? So there, there really is no need to wait for something to happen in order to get started. So there you go, we're creating a new normal and I hope that you're getting a lot out of these videos and I hope you're getting a lot out of these coaching tips. Please leave some feedback, give me some comments, let me know what's interesting to you or what you would like to learn more about and we can address those and put it together for you and really start making progress towards what you say your goals are. And if you want more information about what we do with our private clients, feel free to reach out about that as well. Again, our number one goal is to here to serve you in any best way possible and to get you from where you're at to just being a little bit better in whichever areas you're having trouble with, food, exercise, lifestyle factors, um, stress, sleep, all that stuff. So thank you once again. We appreciate you guys being here. We're honored to be a part of your journey and we look forward to continuing to serve you guys and give you some awesome stuff that you can do. All right, stay tuned. We'll see you next time. Bye.